Good morning. Welcome to Chisholm Creek Baptist Church. In 2 Timothy, we read, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Amen. Let's stand and worship him this morning. I know not what God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. I know not what good or ill may be reserved for me. A weary ways or golden days before his face I see. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come, night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Let's sing that chorus again. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day really good to see you today. The Lord bless you. And some folks said, you got a new microphone. No, it's just an old one that I like. I think I like this better. I can just, the other one I have to tape on my head, and this one I just stick it on. And So I know it's more <laughs> ugly, but who cares? Amen. So as long as you can hear, that's all that's important. So the Lord bless you. We're so glad you're here on this Memorial Day weekend. We've got a lot of folks out today, but we're grateful you are here. And uh, God bless you. We're going to honor uh, those fallen in, in a little while. And so, uh, but just want to say thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer here as we begin this Sunday. Dear Father, I thank you. Lord, our hearts are torn of the horrible tragedy that took place in Texas this last week. Oh, dear God, be with the families that are grieving Lord, whoever they may be, thank you for these valiant teachers who stood in, in face of uh, danger to protect their children. Dear God, I, I think also for all the many babies that were aborted this week, probably thousands, thousands. Lord, I just, uh, our hearts are moved there too. Help us, God, in these days that we live to bring honor and glory to you. Thank you, Father. We'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 
God bless you. Be seated, please. I know Chelsea's going to come in in a minute with announcements for VBS, so I'll be waiting there. And Brother Travis, would you like to go ahead and make your announcement for our youth? Okay, so this is about our youth trip this summer. Like I said, instead of going to Falls Creek this year, we're going to go to the Ark Encounter in Kentucky. This is a long drive and a long trip, so it's kind of broke up differently than what we typically would do. We will, uh, we moved it to July, VBS is in June this year, but we'll leave Sunday morning, July 18th, and we're going to, no, sorry, July 17th. Sunday morning at 8.30, so we'll leave right before church starts, and we're going to drive all the way to Mount Vernon, Illinois. We're going to stay the night there, and then the next day we'll get up and we'll finish the drive out to Foulmouth, Kentucky. I hope it's a more pleasant place than it sounds like. But we'll stay three nights there. There's a camp that we're actually going to be able to rent at a very, very affordable price, so we'll have plenty of stuff to do while we're there. And then the next day we'll go to the Ark, we'll spend all day there, and then the following day we'll go to the Creation Museum and spend the day there. Then once we are done, on the 21st we'll travel to Sykeston, Missouri, stay the night there, and then we'll finish the drive back and arrive here uh, on the 20, I believe it's 22nd, at about 3 p.m. Uh, the cost this year will be about $200 per person, and as always, if you're wanting to go, just come talk to us and we'll see what we can do. Uh, because of the cost of fuel and lodging, uh, we had to up it more than what we typically do. I mean, everything else is going up. Might as well make cost of EBA or church camp go up too. Uh, but what I really want is anybody that's interested, has a youth that would like to go, come talk to me. We want to make this as available as possible. We, if we can take this bus, and we've got 30 seats, so we've got plenty of room. The camps, every place we're staying at has plenty of space. So the more that we can bring, the better. I think it's an opportunity uh, that I, I wouldn't want anybody to miss on. I've had uh, Dan and Roger both said they want to go just to go to the Ark. Uh, but I told them no. Um, <laughs> but I do, every youth, like I want you guys to take this opportunity. You will not regret being able to see what we presume to be the ark, the way it was built, the construction, how it all was put together and how it could all work. It's gonna put ideas in your mind that will just help bring the Bible to life to a story that we've heard and know about, but really put it into perspective. And then I think we're under, or at least myself, I'm underappreciating what the Creation Museum is gonna do for us as well. And the Creation Museum is going to use scientific evidence that supports the Bible and we're gonna see it put into play. So it's, again, going to put these concepts and ideas into our minds that are just going Amen. to grow Amen. our faith. And to do that at a foundation of a young age is only going to get even better as we Amen. get older. So anybody that's got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can reach out to the church and get my number that way or come see me right after the fact. Uh, like I said, we've got, as of now, we're playing on 20, but if we have more, we can always get more tickets and we've got the space. So I appreciate you guys. We'll have a uh, parents meeting sometime probably close to the end of June after church service, so you guys can come. Anybody that's still interested, not sure about it, just reach out and talk to me, and hopefully we can get you that information. Thank you, guys. Created. Designed. Empowered. Are you ready to open up a world of artistry and innovation? Then join us for VBS 2022. Spark and get those creative juices flowing. Spark Studios is the place where imagination is ignited and creativity is awakened. Kids will learn that they have been created, designed, and empowered to use their talents to bring glory to God. And they will learn that God's creativity didn't stop in Genesis. The master artist is working to redeem, reclaim, and transform us, his creation, to the design he planned for us. At Spark Studios, kids will get creative at the Worship Rally Imaginarium, Bible Study Studio, Crafts Design Center, Missions Workshop, Music Soundstage, Recreation Station, and Snack Pavilion. As they get excited about the talents God has given them, they'll discover the beauty of Ephesians 2.10, that they are his workmanship and a masterpiece in process. 
Join us this summer to spark imagination and kick creativity into high gear at Spark Studios. Good morning, I'm Chelsea Schwann, the Children's Director. So that was just a little blurb um, on our Vacation Bible School that we are holding this summer. So Vacation Bible School this year, we are going to be doing a little bit earlier than normal, about a month. Uh, so it will be June 26th through the 30th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. So it is great for any working adults to have time to go to work, get off work, and bring your children. Um, I am still in need of a few volunteers. So specifically for our kindergarten class, I need at least one more adult volunteer. And then in crafts, we still need some helpers. And then also our youth. So our youth group is going to be helping with um, the games every evening. But if any of the girls specifically are interested, or anyone, um, in working like as an aid to the teachers in the classrooms, we could use that as well. So um, as you saw, it is uh, Spark Studios. And it talks about how we are all individually made and created uniquely to use our gifts to serve the Lord. So I encourage you, if you um, could be a blessing to the children, please get involved in some way. Um, there are crafts, recreation, snacks, um, just a whole lot of fun. It's just, you know, what, from Sunday through Thursday night, so not even a full week. But um, if you feel led to serve, please get involved. It's lots of fun. Um, the other thing I encourage you guys to do is I really need help with the advertising. We hopefully will get our signs up today. Michael's awesome. He's already got it on the moving sign for me. But if you have Facebook, help me promote it. Um, I have some flyers. If you can hand them out, like if you, um, I don't know, even when you go to the donut shop or something, those are always really great places just to pin a flyer. Um, because there is a bit of a shortage of supplies, it is more important than ever than you pre-register. So if you have children, grandchildren, friends and family that you know will be attending, please go ahead and get them pre-registered. Um, the link is on our Facebook page at CCBC Children's Ministry. So you can go on there, click the link and get them all signed up. Um, if you are just volunteering yourself, um, please go on and sign up as well under the volunteer form. So if you have any questions, I'm in the children's department. Come see me. Thanks so much. Thank you, Chelsea. Well, today is Memorial Day weekend, and it's the most travel weekend of the year. But we know that Memorial Day is more than just uh, greeting families, being with your families and things, because we want to honor those who were, were uh, killed in battle. And I saw this poem called, written by Kathy Moore, and it's called Fallen Soldiers. Yes, they gave their lives so that we could be free, so that we could live in a land, a land of liberty. They went and fought in battle and never did return, leaving behind their loved ones who so deeply yearned. So let's all remember them, giving honor, thanks, and prayers for our fallen soldiers who have shown us just how much they cared. But uh, we are thankful for all those who uh, died in battle and for all of those of you who have gone to serve our country. Today, uh, our, uh, well, tomorrow, our offices will be closed for Memorial Day holiday, but we will reopen on Tuesday. Our men will still be praying on Tuesday morning at 9. Uh, Wednesday night, we're now meeting from 6.30 to 7.30, and uh, no choir until July the 6th. And Chelsea, it's because last week, as you know, we had a lot of rain, and <laughs> so she canceled the water night, and so she's going to try to do that again this next Wednesday night. So all children are encouraged to bring your, wear your swimsuits under maybe some clothing, and then bring a towel for this Wednesday night. And uh, Tra Brother Travis told about youth trip, and Chelsea told about VBS. And the last thing is, <clears throat> there's going to be, excuse me, <clears throat> There's going to be a deacon's ordination and uh, a gospel ministry ordination on Wednesday evening, June the 8th at 6.30. We have two deacons for de deacon de ordination and one to the gospel ministry. Thank you so much for coming. Well, if you're a, not a regular worshiper with us, we're so grateful that you've come today. And here's how we like to greet our guests. There's a part of your bulletin that says, let's get acquainted. If you wouldn't mind... Uh, just putting down your name and phone number and place it in this big chest back here. We call it the chest of Joash. 
and that's where our offerings go. But just put that piece of paper there. I'll call you this week just to say thank you, see if you have any questions that I'd be happy to answer for you. So uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Here's how we greet the guests. We ask you to stay seated, please. If you are, uh, if this is your first time or you're not a regular worshiper with us, just remain seated. Uh, we want the rest of our church family will stand. We just want to know who's who so that we can make sure all of our guests receive a special welcome. God bless you. Thanks for being here today. So if you're a guest, please remain seated, church family and regular worshipers. Let's go ahead and stand. Greet everyone around you, please. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is holy bound to his oh how strange and divine i can sing all is mine yet not i but through christ in me the night is dark but i am not forsaken for by my side the savior he will stay i labor on in weakness and rejoicing for in my need his power is displayed to this i hold my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley he will lead oh the night has been won and i shall overcome yet not i but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing, I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, 
I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before his throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, though darkness deepens, Lord with me abide when other helpers fail and comforts flee help of the helpless oh abide with me There's a lot of uncertainty going on in the world today. We have all been affected by this terrible, tragic shooting in Texas. The war is still going on in Ukraine. There's soaring gas prices, there's job losses. And sometimes it's easy to start worrying about what happens tomorrow. But the Lord reminds us that he holds tomorrow and that he's in control of all things. And I pray this song will be a blessing to you. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. to gray I don't worry or the future for I know what Jesus said and today I'll walk beside him for he knows what is ahead Tomorrow. 
Every step is getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb. Every bird is getting lighter. Every cloud is silver lined. There the sun is always shining there no tear will dim the eye at the ending of the rainbow where the mountains touch the sky many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. I don't know about it may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrows is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through Thank you so very much. Today is Memorial Day, and I want to do this. At the, usually I might show you a video at the end of the preaching time, but I'm going to do this at the beginning because uh, I don't want to run it short in any way. It only lasts three minutes, but I, I believe it will speak to all of our hearts and maybe help you get ready to understand Memorial Day uh, tomorrow and what it really means. I'm going to, before we get started, we're going to lower the lights, and then we're, I'm going to ask you all to stand with me in honor of all of our brave Americans who have given the final ounce of their service for the, their country, for their God.
Thank you. Be seated. Sometimes we forget that it's not just the brave heroes that give their lives, it's their family that grieve behind. And so, well, today we go from that to joy. Amen. So, but we're going to look at joy unspeakable. Amen. The joy of maturity. Lord willing, we'll finish out um, this uh, chapter and start on chapter 4, the final of uh, Philippians. And so, uh, uh, <clears throat> so I hope this will be an encouragement. I, instead of reading all the text right now, I'm going to go over every one of these texts with you in a moment So, and do my best to, ex to uh, unpack those for you. Uh, but <clears throat> there's a a phenomenal that thing that's happening in our country now, and that is young men in their college years, et cetera, have what's called the Peter Pan syndrome. I don't know if you know about that. It's where young people today refuse to grow up. And uh, I don't want that to be a Peter Pan spiritual problem with us, amen. Everyone to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, a, a young man named Roy Long, a student at Texas Tech, wrote recently, and I'd like to just read what he had to say here about this. Uh, he said, Peter Pan was my childhood hero. He had every quality a kid could want. He could fly, hang out with fairies, and fight pirates in Never Never Land. Except for wearing the tights, uh, I would really see myself doing all those things, and I tried to emulate him in many ways. Now that I'm an adult, I know I should not, uh, I'm hearing some scratching here, I'm not uh, act to be like Peter Pan, but though it seems that many of my generation haven't figured this out, they have a Peter Pan syndrome, a disease that causes someone to believe he or she can remain in childhood forever. This disease preys upon young adults, especially in those afflicted with the syndrome belief that Never Never Land exists. It's called college. Uh, Peter Pan syndrome is the pandemic of our generation manifesting itself and in the, uh, includes a refusal to grow up. Symptoms include a refusal to go on dates, spending hours upon playing video games, eating pizza every meal of the day, and in short, a refusal to take responsibility for life, unquote. And I bring that out to you simply because I think some Christians have, they give their heart to Jesus, they're grateful that they're going to heaven, and then they're done. Uh, no, you're not done. Uh, that's just the beginning. That just gets you in the battle. Now, now you're, you're to grow in grace and knowledge. That's why uh, people ask me, well, why do you go through books of the Bible? Because that's the only thing I know God said he'd bless. And he'll bless it to you. I so imp It's important to me that you grow in the Lord, not just hear some uh, fancy sermon or something. And so uh, I've heard about this little boy. He would got, went to bed, fell asleep, and he fell out of bed. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> it's happened to me, even as an adult. And so... Uh, and his dad came running upstairs, opened the door, and he said, what happened, son? He said, oh, well, he's trying to rub the sleep out of his eyes. And he said, I think I fell out too close to where I got in. <laughs> well, I think that's where some Christians may be. They fall out too close to where they got in. We need to get in and stay in and keep rolling. Amen? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, so this morning, today we're going to look at verses 15 through 21 continuing to grow, uh, that the Lord wants you to grow bigger, stronger for him. You know, each year we should evaluate, have I grown in my faith this year? Has God stretched me through problems, situations that I, instead of just fall off the, uh, you know, get, get all excited about, God has used those to help me grow. And so I want to give you four motivations to grow in, and we see those here uh, from uh, from Paul. Now remember, Paul is still in uh, prison. Uh, he is, he loves this little church called Philippi. And so it's been 10 years since he has seen these people, and yet there's a great uh, love for each other. 
First thing I want Paul, I think we see from Paul's writings here is what I call great encouragement within us. Uh, Paul's encouragement to the Philippians was, let us walk the same rule, let us be of the same mind. We looked at that last week. Let me start here in verse 15. It says, therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Now, I want to emphasize, have this mind. He said, I have one mind. I have one goal. Verse 16, nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. It's a, uh, really, it's almost the same word as he said, one mind uh, earlier in the um, uh, chapter 2. But Paul loved this Philippian church, and as he's in prison, he writes this letter to let them know that to keep going, he's encouraging them and telling them to move forward. We see it in verse 12. Uh, he said, we have not yet attained to perfection. And he said, that's, but you know, God wants, the word perfection kind of throws people. So, I mean, God wants me to be perfect. The Greek word uh, perfection, teleos, doesn't mean sinless. It means mature, to grow up, to mature yourself. And so that's what we see here in verse 15. Um, it's the same root word, teleos. And so I, I just want you to understand, that's what God is looking for in all of us. Uh, you know, each day of our life, God uses something that we'll either grow or we stay where we are. Sometimes we even slide backwards. Paul identified two ways we can respond to the idea of maturity. And I want us to see it. Have this mind, or if you think of anything else, uh, he says, keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Uh, you know, that's how we mature. P perhaps under the influence of the Judaizers, we're going to see something here this morning. You remember the Judaizers, we talked about them last week, but just to reiterate, Judaizers, these are these Jews who come into the church at Philippi, they infiltrate, and they say, yes, Jesus is good, Jesus is wonderful, but he didn't complete everything. So if you want to be saved, you must keep the law, you must become Jewish, you must be circumcised, you must keep the dietary laws, all this, and if you do that, you can move on to Jesus. Now, nothing could be further from the truth. And yet we have, you know, uh, situations like that even to this day. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 3, it's not in your notes, nor is it up here. But read it to you. Galatians 3, 3 says, Are you so foolish, Paul asked the Galatians, having begun in the Holy Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? He said, if you started in the Spirit, you will not be made perfect by your flesh. It'll be by the dear, sweet Holy Spirit, God's Holy Word, etc. And so, um, uh, so we, we see here, you know, Paul, as we looked at last week, was an athlete. He said, move forward. A great writer, um, uh, and he has an excellent book called Mere Christianity, Dr. C.S. Lewis. Lewis was an atheist at one time, became a Christian. He was teaching at Oxford, and God used this man in some unusual ways to write some un unbelievable things. Uh, out of that book, I want to just read to you a paragraph about how he talks about how the Holy Spirit, if Jesus was here talking to us today, the Holy Spirit, he might, he might say these words to you. So hang on, just listen. Make no mistake, Lewis says, if you let me, I will make you perfect. That means mature. The moment you put yourself in my hands, that is what you're in for. Nothing less or other than that. You have free will, and if you choose, you can push me away. But if you do not push me away, understand, I believe this is a message from the Holy Spirit, understand that I'm going to see this job through. Whatever suffering it may cost you in your earthly life, whatever inconceivable uh, purification it may cost uh, you after death, whatever it costs me, I will never rest nor let you rest until you are literally mature, until my Father can say without reservation that he is well pleased with you as he said he was pleased with me. 
This I can do and will do, but I will not do anything less, unquote. I thought it was an excellent uh, piece there because that's exactly what Paul is saying. Uh, it's exactly what our Lord came to do. In John chapter 7, verse 17, Jesus said, If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. He said, uh, and, and notice what Paul, he goes on here, verse 16, he says, Nevertheless, the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by this same rule. Let us be of the same mind. That means that we are in this together, folks. Um, uh, he's encouraging, let this mind be in you, which means keep on keeping on. Don't stop. I don't care these uh, godless Judaizers, the, uh, he calls them uh, adversaries from Satan, uh, coming into the church to uh, cause problems. I remember years ago, we had a cult infiltrate this church. Uh, and I... Uh, this guy, he, had, he looked good, he sounded good, and, and you know, over a period of time, I let him start teaching some classes. The only deal was it was right next to my office, and one day when he started talking about that there's no trinity, there's actually three gods, and he began to get into all that, I, it didn't take me long to jump in there. And so, um, and when I told him, he, until he understood our theology and how we do things, uh, you can't be teaching here. And then he caused a big stink the very next week. But uh, praise God, uh, that's my job. Amen. Uh, I am your under shepherd. And when wolves come, I'm not running away. Uh, I'm going to have to deal with that. Uh, and so, uh, and we have some really weird stuff happening in this country right now. So, but but we see here the Holy Spirit is the dear, sweet Holy Spirit pushing us forward and encouraging us. Dr. Bill Stewart, my father in the ministry, a retired professor from Moody, said when he was alive, he told me, he said, Dan, if you encourage people who are discouraged, you will always have a congregation. <laughs> because there's always discouraged Christians and there's discouraged people. And then he said something else to me. He said, Take God's word and nourish the church with it. And I thought, amen, that is a great thought. I've never forgotten that. Paul was always saying, I don't have a, any new teaching for you. I just want you to be encouraged to continue on. It kind of reminds me of this uh, school teacher in elementary school, second graders. Uh, they turned in their paper and, and she was putting stickers on each one saying, you know, good job here and there. And there's one little lad, uh, she got his paper and it was just a mess. I mean, uh, the words were misspelled, the sentences were fragmented, uh, to all the pieces. And, and he had actually torn the paper trying to erase some of it. And it looked like he had wadded it up. And, uh, and so she's going over and she's about to put an F on it or whatever. And... She's a Christian, and the Lord just spoke to her, said, no, 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 you need to encourage this, this little guy. And she said, well, what can I encourage him? I mean, every, these words are misspelled, here and here. And finally, she said, all right, she had the idea. She wrote, gave him a sticker, wrote on there, and he, when he got it, it said, magnificent margins. Whoa! <laughs> Folks, Sometimes, and you know what, after that, the little guy got more active, and she helped him, and it really helped him move forward in school. Because she gave a little encouragement with a sticker. Sometimes God wants to give each of you magnificent margins, amen? <laughs> we, we should always find something, you know. I tell people all the time, cheer up, it'll get worse, you know, and <laughs> that's probably not that encouraging, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm always just trying to shock people. I said, this world is not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. But cheer up, Jesus said, when people despise you, desperately use you, speak ill against you, have a party. That's what he said. Just have a party with that. So no matter what happens, we're to, as Christians, I'm to come alongside of you and encourage you. Years ago when I was playing football in junior high, we had a new football uh, coach, I'm sorry, I just some chili from last night. 
But, um, but uh, we had a, a new football coach, and he had just finished playing football in college, and he was, this was his first coaching job. He was excellent. I'll never forget him. His name's Coach Ware. Coach Ware got in front of us. He said, all right, gentlemen, what do I hold in my hand? Well, he's holding a football. I mean, what are we going to say? He said, say it, say it. So we said football. He said, what's this out here? It's a football field. He said, the job is to get this ball down there. Do you understand that? So, um, and it's to stop the other team from going the other way. Do you understand that? And so, and then he told us this. He said, I'm going to encourage you because when you run your wind sprints at the end of uh, practice, if you don't give everything, I'm going to come behind you, pick you up by the seat of your pants, and I'm going to run you into the end zone. And boy, we'd be, I mean, we're tired. We're, but here comes Coach Ware up, and uh, he, he was so physically fit. He, he did that numerous times. I'm grateful he didn't do it to me because I would just, <laughs> my tongue was just hanging out. But you know what? We learned a lot. He taught us the basics. He encouraged us. He was always, you know, he said, well, we're going to start here from the beginning and move our way forward. We didn't win a lot, but that didn't matter <laughs> so what. We were encouraged. He was always saying something good about somebody, and that kind of made you want to go forward. Romans 15, 4, this is not in your notes. It says, now I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. I'm not much for the Living Translation, but it is good here. Such things were written in the Scriptures long ago in, to teach us. And the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. Amen. Paul is saying magnificent margins. Keep going. Keep moving. The second thing I want you to see, good examples are, are all around us. Notice verse 17. He says this, brethren, join in following my example. Now, wait a second. What are you saying? Follow my example and note that those so walk as you have uh, us for a pattern. You have us for a pattern. That word example, the word hippo, <laughs> it, it, it means to exactly what you think. Uh, I am your example. I'm going to be in front of you. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to pick you up by the seat of the pants and run you into the end zone of heaven one day. I'm not going to, I love you too much to let you stay where you are, is what he's saying. God loved you enough to save you, but he loves you too much to leave you there. Amen? That's what Paul is saying. And so uh, uh, this, this word uh, that you may be fellow imitators, the word pattern, we get our word mimic from that name, mimic uh, him. There is much confusion today about whether it's appropriate to follow anyone's example except Christ. People say, oh, oh, you know, there's hypocrites all over the church. And like I always say, there's the only thing smaller than the hypocrites, people who hide behind them. But, um, but here's the thing is that, uh, yes, there's hypocrites, but the Bible tells us to encourage one another. My job predominantly is to encourage you. And that's what Paul said. He said, my job is follow me. I'm following Jesus. You follow me. Now, I know I've, I've, people have asked me about this sex scandal among the Southern Baptists and everything. Uh, uh, folks, I can't do anything about that. There's not much I can do. I, I think there's just a low accountability for many pastors, and that's, um, that's a shame. And, uh, uh, but all I can say is this. I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he will keep that to the day which I've committed unto him. Jeannie just sung it beautifully, and that's the scripture verse of Paul to us today. And that, uh, <clears throat> and so yes, there are play actors, people who put on a good show, but they're not for real. And, uh, and, and so it's very important that we follow after, uh, you know, a, a true spiritual leader, a pastor, somebody who really cares about your soul. And, and that's what matters. You know, in olden days, and the, some of you that have been in the Navy may tell me this is true today, I don't know. But in olden days, when they went to war, the flagship went ahead of all the rest of the ships. The flagship was out front, and they would follow after the flagship, et cetera. And so, uh, now that was in sailing days, so I don't sure if that's done today or not. 
I'll, I'll give you a couple. I've already mentioned Dr. Bill Stewart. What a wonderful, godly man he was to me. And also, I will tell you another man. Uh, his name is W.A. Criswell, Wally Amos Criswell. Um, pastored the First Baptist Church in Dallas for 53, 54 years, something like that. I heard him preach a dynamic sermon in 1984. He was 91 years old, and uh, God used him in a great way. But uh, he's always been like a, a mentor to me. Dr. Adrian Rogers, another mentor, uh, and others like that, that I have watched and looked at and recognized these are men of God. These guys know the Bible. They love the Bible. They preach the Bible. W.A. Criswell went from Genesis to Revelation. Took him 34 years to do it, but he did it. Amen? Because, and, and he said, well, I bet he emptied the church up. Became the largest church in America at that time. So, uh, but, but follow my example is what Paul is saying. And so we, we get our word mimeaw, which means example. Mimeaw uh, is, we get our word uh, mimeograph or mimic, etc. It means to copy. To copy, and that's what he's saying, to, to copy them, to follow after them. The third thing I want you to see is this, the godless enemies away from us. He wants these godless enemies to get away from these precious people in Philippi that he loves so much. So I, I believe Philippi was his favorite church. I can't prove that, but it, just by looking uh, at everything, uh, it, Probably second, not far behind, would be the church at Ephesus. But let me go on here. There, there were some who were setting a bad example to, to the Philippians. So we start here in verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and how tell, now I tell you again, weeping, that they are, notice these words, the enemies of the cross of Christ. Now these are these Judaizers coming in telling them, You've got to do this, 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 and this, become Jewish, then you can go to Jesus. May I say it's Jesus plus nothing equals salvation. Jesus plus nothing. You add anything to Jesus, and he steps away. Amen? He won't be a part of it. No. It's, if you try to add, it's Jesus plus baptism. It's Jesus plus good works. Jesus plus join this church. It doesn't matter. You add anything to Jesus, and Jesus is done. I'm not in that. You can go believe whatever you want to believe, but it's not going to be in me. Because it's Jesus plus nothing. That's the equation. Equals salvation. And so, uh, so we, we see here <clears throat> the enemies of the cross of Christ. Now, I want you to look at the words, whose and who, all right? That'll help you understand these verses very well. So uh, uh, he says, their goal whose end is destruction. Now that's interesting. Uh, we see that in the next verse down. Uh, whose end is destruction. That word for destruction is our word perdition. You remember there was a guy named Judas who was the son of what? Perdition. Yeah. Now, he's not a son. He's the son of perdition. And so, he died, but did he go to hell? It's not what the Bible says. You'll read what, preach, uh, what Peter preached. said, God put him in his own place. So, are you saying the Antichrist is going to be the son of perdition? That's what the Bible says. So, are you saying Judas? I don't know. That's way above my pay grade, so I have no idea. I'm just telling you that's interesting to me. Uh, and so uh, I don't think there's a guy running around here saying, oh, I'm Judas. I'm, no, I, uh, he probably wouldn't even know until it's too late. But uh, if the Philippians followed these false teachers, uh, their end would be the same. They were enemies of the cross of Christ. Uh, these people were not true Christians. They're not saved by the grace of God. Their theology was false, and it kept them from because it's, it's uh, be circumcised, keep the dietary laws, be Jewish, and you're saved. That's not what the Bible says. And so we see their goal, we see its destruction. Number two, their God, who God is their belly. Now Paul says that the God of these people is not the father of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 
and the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they go nuts over what they don't eat and what they should eat. Their God is their what? Bellies. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is, that's not chili. That's something else. I don't know what it is. But, uh, but, uh, uh, but the, this was the very philosophy of the Romans. So, number three, their glory, whose glory is in their shame, the Bible says, verse 19, whose end is destruction, perdition, whose God is in their belly. Now, do you see all these whose end is destruction, whose God, little g, is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, and last of all, we're going to see who set their mind on earthly things. So, to glory means to applaud. They're applauding, Im, you know, immorality. They're Im, uh, all this. They're flaunting themselves, uh, and so we see their glory. Though he says it's shame. It's not glory. It's shame. Paul says. Also, we see their grid. Who set their mind on earthly things? That everything went through that grid work of keeping the law. Finally, Paul says that set their mind on earthly things. They're set. They can't move off that. All they think about is earth and pleasures. There are, that's what Paul wanted the Philippians' mind to be set differently, to look differently. And then we get on down here in verse 20, and he talks here about our citizenship is in heaven. Praise God. And that's our last point I'd like to give you, and that's the grand ex uh, expectation before us. Not only do we need encouragement, and we need encouraging examples, but we also need a sense of expectation, amen, about the future. And Paul creates that for the Philippians by reminding them that their citizenship is in heaven. Amen. Now, keep in mind, he's making a play on words, and I'd like to point it out to you. You can understand it in English as well as in the Greek text. It's, it's obvious. But you see, these, the, the Philippians... It was, this city was started by Philip of Macedon, the father of Alexander the Great. Now, so that's, that's Greek. I, you can't get more Greek than that. But that was 300 years before Paul's time. So now we have a Roman colony. They are all Romans. They live 800 miles away from Rome. They're a long ways. But their names are written, guess where? In the uh, citizenship uh, paperwork, etc., in Rome. When a child was born, their name was very important because it had to go to Rome and be added to the list. Hallelujah. Today, if you don't know Jesus, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, the Bible says the angels will rejoice. Amen. And on top of that, they're going to write your name down in glory. And how are they going to get that removed? No one can ever remove it once it's written down. Amen. And so I'm saying, we, Paul is saying here, your citizenship is a long ways from home to Rome. He said, but your true citizenship spiritually is in heaven. And he said, never lose sight. Amen. Folks, I can't remember who I read this from, but... I'll just take credit for it, all right? Uh, it's, no, I, I don't, I, it's not original with me, but he, this uh, author said we should live our lives with the end result in mind. We should always live our lives recognizing this isn't home. One of these days, we're going home, amen? And that's where my citizenship is. I was going to bring my passport this morning, and... and Forgot it. <laughs> so if somebody asks, I want to see your passport. I'm sorry, I left it at home. You know, sure, sure you did. Yeah. But I, I read on it the other day. You know, it's it. I never read my passport before. <laughs> I just, but I, I read it the other day, and it said it's from the Secretary of State of the United States. I thought, wow, he didn't know even know who I am. But uh, it has some really, if you mess that up, if you mutilate it in some way, you'd go to prison for a year. Did you know that? I, 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 that's in there. It's in the fine print, but it's in there. I read that. But when I go to Israel, they said, may we see your passport, please? Sometimes they're not that nice. They said, passport, please. <laughs> Whatever. You give it to them. 
They look it over. They look at you. They look at that. And then, okay, come on in. And, uh, but, you know, our passport is the blood of Jesus Christ. Because you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you're going home. Amen? Amen. This is not home. C.H. Spurgeon said this, hold the things of this world loosely or you'll become attached to them. People get so attached. This is my house. This is this. This is this. This is this. This is this. My friend, you remember the, uh, what Jesus said there uh, with the man that said, I, I, I've got these great crops, but I don't have any place to put them. I know what I'll do. I'll pull down my barns and I'll build bigger barns. Yeah. And then when I do that, I'm going to say to my soul, soul, rest, because you have much laid up for many years. Jesus said to him, thy fool. Tonight your soul will be required of you. And whose things will these be? I tell you what, my mother taught me that lesson. If I didn't learn anything, I did learn that. We would, my aunt came to live. I did, I'm the oldest child in my family. And, but I didn't have an older brother or sister, but Judy, my aunt, came to live with us for a year. She, valedictorian at uh, uh, Medill, graduated when she was 16. She's smart. And so... Uh, so my mother would pop a bunch of popcorn. We'd sit on the floor. I'm about uh, eight years old, somewhere near. I'm not sure exactly. But we play Monopoly. You ever play Monopoly? And, you know, my parents, they saved all the time. So I'm saving money. You know, every time I get some, I save it. I would never win. Most of the time, it was Judy. And she'd look at me and say, well, one of these days, Danny, you'll learn how to... I said, well, one of these days is coming up. One of these days is coming up. And I wanted to play that every single night till I... All summer long. You know? <laughs> and I tell you what, it finally got to me. I, my mother would win sometimes, Judy, most of the time. And then finally I came to the understanding, hey, you don't win this by saving. You win by buying everything you can get your hands on. So it finally happened towards the end of the summer. I strategically, wisely crushed my dear aunt and my mother. Oh, I win. I won. And my mother, after I won, they both congratulated me. No question, I won it. They said, all right, Danny. It all goes back in the box. I said, there ain't no way, Jose. I want to experience this moment. I may never happen again, you know? Uh, but my mother said, no, Daddy, that's the way life always is. The money goes back into the box. Broadway, park place, hotels, railroads, it all goes back in the box. He said, well, that's not very encouraging, Pastor Dan. One of these days, if the Lord doesn't come back, this thing is going to give out and it'll go in the box. So will your body, but not your soul. Your soul and your spirit will be with the Lord. Amen. Why is it? Because, you know, you name it. Muhammad, I can show you the box. He's still there. Confucius, show you the box. Still there. Confucius, yes, there's the box. He's still there. There's only one box. It's in Jerusalem by the by, by this place of the skull. And my friend, there's no one in there. He went in the box. He came out of the box. And every person that puts trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you too will come out of the box. Amen. Because you're following Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Amen. Oh, if you've got a spiritual Peter Pan syndrome, wake up. Because these are great days to run the race. These are great days to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, you may take two steps forward and step back, but you're still moving forward. That's all right. Keep going. Amen. Oh, what a Savior. 
to put our citizenship in heaven. Live your life with the end game in sight. Amen. Would you bow with me, please? You may not understand everything I've preached on today, but you say, Pastor Dan, I'm not absolutely certain that I've given my life to Jesus Christ. You can today. Would you pray a prayer of faith with me? I, I could train a parrot. It would mean nothing, but you would have, you'd just pray and believe with your whole heart. God would save you today. He'll redeem you right there. I'm going to pray this. You don't have to pray it out loud, but pray it and mean it. Just say, dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I want to be one of your children. I accept Jesus and Jesus alone as my Lord, my Master, and my dear God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. With heads still bowed, if you pray that for God bless you. In a moment, we're going to give an invitation. We do this every Sunday. We're not going to wait long, but if you today said yes to Christ, don't be ashamed of him. He's not ashamed of you. You don't have to join this church. Like I say all the time, I wouldn't walk across the street to make you a Baptist. But I do just about anything to help you know Christ. Today, if you said yes, come. Maybe, well, I want to be a part of this church, a church that still believes the Bible, teaches the Bible. Well, that's what we want to be. Because that's the only thing I know that God blesses. So today, if God's speaking to your heart, whatever your decision is, come. I'll meet you here at the front. We'll pray. We'll rejoice. All of our people will rejoice. So say yes to him today. Father, take now this message. May it bring glory to you. In your name I pray. Let's stand. I'll meet you, meet you right here at the front. Mom, dad, teenager. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stain lose all their guilty stain Hope to see you next Sunday as we start into chapter 4 and move our way through it. There's some wonderful, wonderful, we'll have to go kind of slow because it's, it's so deep, but there's just no way we can just plow right through it. But we'll, we'll, we'll walk through it. Also, if you'd like to join us on Wednesday night, we're going through the book of Job, Job chapter 10 this week, and so we're going verse, chapter by chapter. We'd love for you to join us. That's from 6.30 to 7.30, place for the kids, the youth, and everyone. And if you're interested in going, uh, have some kids wanting to go with us to the ark. Uh, Dr. Ham is a tremendous man. I know him who started that whole work as, and also the uh, Creation uh, uh, Museum. Uh, it, this will be life-changing for these young people. I believe it will be a blessing. So uh, just let Brother Travis know. And if you'd like to be a part, help us in Bible school too. So uh, you can just get with Chelsea. Well, if you're glad you came, would you say amen? amen. Hey, amen. praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give God all the glory. God bless you. And, and tomorrow, I hope you have a wonderful Memorial Day. And give some thought maybe of seeing the little film we showed you today. You know, it's not just the men who gave their lives. It's, it's the people left behind that always hurt so bad, badly. So, uh, but God is good. And so, God bless you. Well, Brother Bright, as always, you do a great job. Thank you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. 
and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. 